as a food photographer, the backgrounds that we use are super important. Well, I'm gonna talk about the four main types that I use and their pros and cons. Now let's start off with the, the natural look, and that is your, your plank of wood, wait there. This is one of many planks of wood I have. This is part of the garden shed, which got knocked down. And I'll stack these up and you get this beautiful rustic look. They're very useful. I've got railway sleepers, I've got old tables, all that sort of stuff, reclaimed wood. You get it from reclaimed wood sites. Sometimes you just find them on the street. Found this in my backyard. A couple of these stacked together and you can take a beautiful natural looking image. These are great. The texture's perfect. However, you don't really want to be carrying these around too much. The railway sleepers are covered in some sort of paint which smells disgusting. I think it's like creosote or something like that. And the splintery, they're dusty, they're dirty, but they do look good. So these are a good solid start. They're very affordable, often free. But yes, the plank of wood. Then we go through to the stylish backgrounds like this. These are painted onto wood. There's some texture painted into them. You can buy them from some great companies. They're pretty pricey, three to 400 pounds a piece. You can make them yourselves, but to be honest, the companies that do make them, the people who spent a lot of time making them do a really good job of them. Now, this is actually one of my own ones that I've made. Um, I don't sell these. I pop some links to people who do sell these in the description. Um, but they're, they're very time consuming to make and to make good ones, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. But the downside is they're quite heavy and big. You don't want to be taking these on location. We took six of these boards, big ones, this is like a sample size, and um, six big full-size boards, A2 size, I think they were, all the way to Paris and back from the UK. It was a real pain in the ass. But they're very nice, very beautiful, nice aesthetic. They were very trendy. They're sort of going out a bit now, but they were good. They are good. Nice boards. Something that I use a lot of in my work are these. This is a Savage paper roll. Savage is the brand. Uh, I think there's other brands as well. I'm sure there's other brands as well, but Savage make really nice paper rolls. I use these for a lot of my shots at the moment. I love the colors, the vibrancy. This is a mini size roll. This is on the floor, I'm sat down. It's pretty big. Back there? No, hang on. Ooh, there. These are full sized rolls. They're a pain in the arse to transport and get out. But these are great, the colors are vibrant, there's so much selection out there. They're pretty affordable. The big ones are 50 pounds, but they're 11 meters long. The small ones are like 30 pounds and $40. I'll pop some links in the description. These are great, I love these. I didn't use them in food for a long time. I just didn't quite understand their usage. I assumed it was like a portrait thing or a product thing, but now I'm a big fan of them. I'm gonna count these in with the paper rolls, otherwise it ruins my introduction. But what I've got here is a sort of box that I bought off Amazon full of colored card. I use this sort of stuff all the time. We've got the, the pastel-y ones, we've got the, the vibrant ones all in here. They're very good for small shots. I really like this sort of thing. And obviously you can take this anywhere with you. It's just a little box of paper, it's very useful. And then the fourth option is the paper roll. Now I've not included a, a plastic or laminated roll because I don't really like the look of them. Uh, for the same reason that I don't use the PVC or laminated paper rolls, obviously which aren't paper rolls, for portrait work. But this here is a paper roll. It has pros and cons as well. The pro is that it's cheap and you can roll it up into a tube. The con is it's paper. It can take a bit of a splash if you wipe it quickly, but if you get too much mess on there, they're sort of disposable. Now, full disclaimer, this is one of mine. I sell these. Um, I will pop a link in the description below because I quite like them. Um, and they're all shot with like really high resolution cameras, Carl's Ice Optics. They're nice little bits of kit and I post these worldwide. So if you do want one, they're about 30 pounds which I think is $35, have a look in the link in the description. Now, all of these backgrounds have very different uses and I would use them in very different ways as well. So the big wooden boards, we'd probably only really use in the studio nowadays. We wouldn't take them on location unless we had to and then we'd freight ship them over. The paper rolls I'd mostly use in location if I was tight in storage because you roll them up into a tube and they can come with you, restaurant shoots, location shoots in your house. And then the planks of wood, I really wouldn't use those at home at all because they're such a nightmare. They're dusty, they're dirty, they're splintery, they're big, they're heavy. But in the studio, we use those a lot. They're a real favorite in here. I hope this has been of use to you and I hope you don't mind my shameless plug for my backgrounds in here as well. Um, hopefully the information is useful enough that you can palette it. I don't really like doing a hard sell. I'm too British for that sort of thing. Um, but anyway, if you have used one of my backgrounds, do let me know how they are. Um, I've been using them a lot, obviously, because I have lots of them here. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.